There's a phenomena sweeping across the 21st century church. It's evidenced in a vast movement of people across age, denominational, and cultural spectrums who are committed to making Jesus famous in our generation. They are led by an army of worship leaders, men and women who are not committed to their own visibility, but are committed to making Jesus visible in our generation. It was John Wimber who said many years ago that the real test in our day would not be in the crafting of new and excellent worship music, but rather the real test would be in the godliness of those who deliver that music. Hi, my name is Dan Wilt, and we'd like to welcome you into the world of leading worship. What is worship biblically? Perhaps one of our best definitions on the topic is found in Romans chapter 12. And I'd like to read you that passage only from a fresh rendering of the scriptures in the message by Eugene Peterson. It says this, So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. True biblical worship is about living a sacred life. It's about living a God-centered life, where every one of our choices and decisions whether they be related to our marriage, or our finances, or our relationships, or our work, are God-centered. We begin with God. We place God in the middle of our lives, and we set God and His kingdom as our end purpose and goal. Well, how does corporate worship fit into that model? Corporate worship is effectively the fountainhead of lives who have mingled themselves together, expressing their worship on a daily basis, coming together to sing the songs of Zion, to sing the songs of corporate acclamation and adoration to the living God that is being worshiped in that place. Leading worship is the most sacred, delightful responsibility in, in the church, in my mind, in my humble opinion, and I think it's something, it's this incredible, delightful sort of interweaving of being a servant and yet doing it in a way that brings life to you. And um, my encouragement to all of you is to never take that for granted. Never, never turn it into something for yourself, but remember what it was like for you when you first encountered intimate worship and the tenderness and the fact that you, nobody was sort of, you know, trying to make you do anything, trying to belittle you, but just calmly just saying, come. You know, this is the time, this is the place, let's meet, let's go and meet with God. And there's many, many important positions in the church of instruction, of correction, of all of those things. But I think it's sort of like, for me, it's sort of like, all these things, and at the very heart is simply the, the, the longing of the human heart. When can I go and meet with God? And there you are as a worship leader. You have that chance, that it's sacred responsibility to take that cry in the human heart and say, what about now? And all you need to do, you don't need to be fancy, you don't need to be clever, you just need to take a few simple songs that express that core thing, when can I go and meet with God, and offer it up to God, to the audience of one, and doing it in such a way that they can do it together. And, and you walk away at the end of it knowing that that's made a difference in all of those people's hearts, whether it's those ten people in your living room or whether it's a thousand people at a conference. Because the human heart cries. When can I go and meet with God? And what an incredible and 
awesome responsibility we have to do that. It's a tremendous privilege to have the opportunity to lead God's people into that intimate place of worship. We can't lead anyone anywhere that we haven't first been ourselves. Our strongest worship leading instrument is not our guitar or our keyboards or the voices with which we lead. Our strongest worship leading instrument is our lives. Therefore, worship leadership requires personal integrity, a life that is being well lived in the presence of God. As well, worship leaders need a high degree of accountability, accountability in their own walk with God, but also accountability before men as a leader in the body of Christ. Obviously, yeah, as a worship leader, again, the important thing is, is your heart, your kind of, your attitudes, your values. Um, and there's the danger that if you're doing a lot of upfront stuff, the upfront stuff becomes the focus and the hidden life can be neglected. Um, and that's a very dangerous thing. So I think for, for leaders, all generally, it's just so important to have those people in your lives who you're accountable to, who can speak into your, uh, you know, your, the things that you do, and also can ask those tough questions. And personally, I'm so grateful for, for those friends who will sometimes ask the hard questions. Um, you know, Tim, what's your motivation? You know, Tim, the, what are you doing there? I'm not sure that was such a good thing. Uh, and it's, it's tough to take, but it, it's, it's wonderful because it keeps you real and, uh, you know, it r reminds you what it's all about and uh, just helps you to focus on the, the important thing and that's on, on God and maintaining your relationship with God. You know, before anything, I'm, I'm a child of God and that's the important relationship for me. Um, and to have people speaking into my life makes a big difference. Worship leadership is a high calling. It's a sacred trust that God invites us into. At the same time, it's a wonderful privilege to lead people from our own secret place of worship into a public place where they can encounter God as well.